right. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dr. Bob Ross, and I'm an associate professor of social justice studies here at Point Park University. And I'm sorry that we can't be together in person. I was really looking forward to seeing you all and meeting you all um, at the Center for Media Innovation. It seems like a lifetime ago, but I guess that would have been just a few weeks ago. Um, but unfortunately, we're all sheltering in place, and here I am in my attic at home. Um, nevertheless, I'm excited to talk to you today about uh, social justice and the media. And um, I'd like to talk about how to consume the media with social justice in mind, and maybe uh, offer a few words about producing your own media um, from a, a social justice perspective. So when we talk about social justice in the media, the first thing we have to consider, of course, is what is social justice? Uh, what does this mean? Um, and I'm gonna try to break that down uh, for you as simply as possible. Social justice often gets compared with criminal justice, and sometimes those two uh, concepts overlap a bit. Um, social justice, unlike criminal justice, though, uh, is focusing on society as a whole. Criminal justice usually refers to uh, individual cases, uh, individual crimes, and that sort of thing. Um, and while that certainly can overlap with social justice, social justice is looking at justice at a society level, uh, justice at a society level. And so when we say justice in both cases, it means some sense of fairness. Uh, and I think we all, from age three or four uh, to young adulthood and adulthood, we all understand generally um, what, what fairness might mean, even if we have different ideas of, of exactly what that could mean. So fairness at a social level, fairness among society uh, is what I mean by social justice. And in particular, people who are um, advocates for social justice, people who are studying social justice, um, they're concerned with fairness on two general levels within society. One is at the level of what we might call distribution. Uh, and by that, I mean uh, distribution of resources, of wealth, of money, of income, of food, of health care, the sorts of things that can be shared uh, in a society. And so a socially just uh, society would have um, a fair distribution of, of resources, a fair distribution of food, of shelter, of education, of health care, uh, of wealth. And so that's social justice in, in, in one realm. On the other side, and these two can overlap and, and uh, blend into one another, social justice um, means fairness in the ways that people are seen and in the ways that um, they are represented by others. Um, fairness in the ways that people can represent themselves. So in other words, um, social justice in this sense would be a world in which people um, are not disadvantaged by their gender identity, by their race, by their physical abilities, um, by their religion, um, by their physical appearance. Um, and they would not be um, represented by others in the media, for example, um, in ways that would be harmful uh, to their their social identity, or to put it differently, um, a group of people would not be represented unfairly or um, in a stereotypically um, disparaging way based on their, their, their identity. So if we look at social justice in those two ways, um, on the one hand as a sense of fairness of how resources are distributed in society, and on the other hand, a fairness in the way that people are represented, people can represent themselves, people are seen and heard um, in society, uh, we can start to look at how social justice um, and the media correspond with one another. So first of all, by media, what I'm thinking about here um, are primarily news media um, and entertainment media. And by entertainment media, I mean movies, TV shows, uh, music, uh, that sort of thing. And by news media, I mean um, the sorts of journalism that reports on what's going on in the world. And for both news and entertainment media, of course, this can come in multiple forms. It can come in print form. It can come um, online. It can come on TV, um, through audio uh, forms. 
Um, but generally, when I'm thinking of media, and I know there are folks here who can look at it much more um, complex, uh, complicatedly than I can, um, what I mean is um, those sorts of things, news and entertainment media. So uh, what about social justice and the media? Um, I think when we're consuming media, there are some things we should pay attention to, uh, things we, questions we should ask um, in relation to social justice. So for example, just to, to, to start, um, when we're watching a, a piece of news or reading an, an article or watching a movie, um, we should ask simply, does this media sufficiently consider uh, issues of social justice um, or injustice. So for example, if it's a news article about the COVID-19 pandemic, and there are plenty of them out there. In fact, it's hard to find an article these days that is not about uh, COVID-19. But to the extent that um, we're, we're looking at a, an article about COVID-19, are they looking at issues of social inequality? Are they looking at how this disease uh, is related to injustices in the distribution of healthcare or injustices in the distribution of economic resources that may enable some people to stop working and um, make it very difficult for others. Um, there is a, a deep um, set of literature uh, studies on injustices around healthcare, healthcare related to race, related to income, related to, to gender. And COVID-19 has illustrated ways in which um, those injustices are, are very stark. And so African-Americans, for example, are suffering disproportionately from COVID-19. Um, poor people, regardless of race, are suffering disproportionately from, from the COVID-19 crisis. So is the, the media that you're consuming, is the, does the news uh, that you're watching or reading or listening to, is it considering those um, issues of inequality or is it presenting it as just one blanket pandemic that's affecting someone equally? And so that's something you should consider. Um, and if we can stray away from the, the pandemic for a moment, um, this is something we can think about um, in all of the news and entertainment media that we consume. Um, what, what, is, what are the issues at play here? What are they, what are they covering? Um, what are we learning from this? Are we learning something about inequality or movements toward equality? Or is this something that has nothing to do with social justice? And that's okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm a big baseball fan and sometimes I just like to watch baseball or read books about baseball. And while there are certainly social justice issues that intersect with baseball, um, sometimes it's nice just to, just to escape and, and read about something that, that has nothing to do with social justice or that at least is not at the forefront. Um, and so that's okay. I'm not suggesting that everything you consume media-wise has to be about social justice, but um, we should consider those issues when, when we're consuming our media. Um, secondly, as we're reading and listening and watching news media and entertainment media, uh, an important thing to consider is does this media reinforce social injustices um, in ways that it uh, represents certain people um, or ignores groups of people or certain issues? So for example, uh, there is a really good documentary called Killing Me Softly. Uh, and this is a documentary that um, details the ways in which um, advertising, entertainment media, news media represent women uh, in a very, um, to put it nicely, unhealthy way. Uh, it, it represents women in ways that um, are unrealistic and unfair, um, that are disparaging. And so what this documentary is illustrating is um, how particular forms of news, entertainment, media, advertising, um, reinforce gender inequalities. Um, likewise, with, uh, with race, there are um, good documentaries that show how news and entertainment media reinforce inequalities uh, of race. So for example, um, there's a documentary called Real Bad Arabs that shows how uh, especially movies have portrayed Arabs um, in very negative light, so only as terrorists or only as uh, violent people uh, of some kind. And so in this sense, the news media 
is contributing to social injustice or the entertainment media is contributing to social injustice in that it is unfairly representing a whole group of people. Uh, there's another documentary called The Slanted Screen, um, which portrays how um, similarly how entertainment media has um, unfairly represented uh, Asians and Asian Americans in particular. Um, and there are, unfortunately, there are so many cases of this, of the ways that both entertainment media and news media have unfairly uh, represented whole groups of people based on gender, based on race, based on uh, sexuality. Uh, another couple that come to mind are Real Engine, which uh, rep shows how uh, Native Americans have been represented, uh, and another called Color Adjustment, uh, which face focuses on, on race and particularly African Americans and how they have been represented. Um, so in other words, to, to sum this part up, uh, news and entertainment media can uh, reinforce social injustice, but it's up to us as consumers to, to consume our media, to, to read, to listen, to uh, watch media critically and to pay attention to how um, maybe a particular TV show or a character on a TV show or a movie or a news story actually um, is an unfair representation of a whole group of people. Um, one interesting test that uh, a feminist film critic, I think she's from Sweden, um, came up with uh, is called the Bechdel test. That was her last name. And what she noticed is that most movies, um, if there are any female characters in the movies, um, most likely if they were in there at all, they would only talk to men and or talk about men. And so she created this Bechdel test, uh, and you can look this up online. And all she asks is in a movie, um, are there female characters who A, talk to other women? Um, and do they talk to other women about something or someone other than men? Uh, and, and surprisingly she found, or maybe not surprisingly, she found that very few movies pass the Bechdel test. Most movies, if there are female characters at all, they are only there to support the male characters and their their only dialogue is either to or about the male characters. And so this is really a, a way of critically interrogating uh, cinema uh, from a social pers justice perspective, from a feminist perspective in particular. So uh, what can you do as a media consumer, uh, as someone who uh, follows the news, as someone who watches movies and TV shows? Well, I think, as far as the news goes, one thing you can do is to, to start is read the whole article. Um, unfortunately, we are in this age of social media where we um, see tweets or we see headlines and that's all we ever read. And, and maybe we'll read the first uh, few sentences that are in the lead that are posted on, on social media. Um, but you need to read the whole article to get the whole picture. So for example, uh, a news story that has just been out in the last week, uh, highlights how um, the death toll in the United States from COVID-19 has now passed the death toll uh, from the Vietnam War, okay? So on its surface, from that headline, we can see that um, well, COVID-19 is very serious. It's a national tragedy. Um, thousands of people have died. Tens of thousands of people have died. Um, but from that headline, we don't see the inequalities within this tragedy. So for, for one, um, what this headline doesn't tell us is that um, while thousands, tens of thousands of people of Americans died in Vietnam, far more Vietnamese people uh, were killed in Vietnam than were Americans. And so uh, this headline alone um, doesn't show us the inequality in that war to begin with. But beyond that war, if we look at the present tense, um, and, and read further through his headlines, we'll see, as I mentioned before, that uh, people of color are disproportionately affected by COVID-19 and are dying at higher rates, uh, and poor people are um, disproportionately impacted and are dying at higher rates, people um, without access to uh, good health care. And just as I did with the Vietnam War, with COVID-19, we can also and should also look beyond the United States and how um, people in other countries are disproportionately impacted. Um, people who don't have access to clean water, much less 
um, hand sanitizer or um, ventilators or any sort of healthcare equipment. And so um, when we just look at the headline, we don't see those details, but if we read the entire article, hopefully um, we'll, we'll see more of those details. Um, I think it's also important to carefully curate your news consumption. And by that, I mean, don't just read Twitter and, and consume the headlines. Uh, and even if you do read the whole articles, the whole articles that are um, sort of thrown at you by social media. Um, I think I, I'm gonna provide a list of, uh, of good news sources um, to, to consider, but um, be careful about what you're consuming. And, and one rule of thumb, and some people might disagree with me on this, but one rule of thumb is don't watch the news. Don't watch the news, read the news or listen to the news. And I say that because cable news and local TV news and national TV news um, is generally pretty bad. Um, there are good journalists uh, who work for those news outlets and they're doing good journalism, but mostly those are multinational corporations who, are, who have a primary interest in getting you to watch the advertisements in between the news segments um, and keep watching so that you can get to another set of, of advertisements. Um, it's, uh, they're selling a product and that product just happens to be news media. Um, more importantly, um, the cable news networks uh, are, um, are really interested in um, sensationalism. Uh, and, and by cable news networks, I mean CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, CNBC. If you watch these, if, if you do, if you can stomach it, um, almost always there's a ticker on the bottom that says breaking news. There's always breaking news. But if you look carefully, often that breaking news happened 12 hours ago, or it's not really that important. Um, so they're just trying to grasp your attention and hold on to it for as long as they can so they can get you through the commercial breaks and so that you can consume the, uh, the advertising. Um, and it's, they don't look into the same depth that uh, print journalism does. Um, so I think while there are, is some value in those um, TV news sources, I think it's a good rule of thumb just to, to turn the TV off or turn the video off on your computer and stop watching the news and instead read the news. Um, and there are a couple exceptions to that, which I'll, I'll provide for you in uh, the resources um, uh, later. Um, and, and let me just say in terms of reading the, the news, um, it's not perfect, but the New York Times is a great place to start. Um, the Wall Street Journal uh, is fine as well. Just don't pay attention to the opinion um, section in the, in the editorials. Um, local news, the Post-Gazette is, is a great place to, to start. Um, public source is also a great place to, um, to consume uh, print journalism. Um, I think it's also important as you're following the news and also as you're looking at movies and TV shows uh, to learn about people and places and issues that you're not familiar with. Um, so one thing I try to do when I read the New York Times every morning is to read articles about places that I know um, relatively little about or to read about an issue that uh, I'm not familiar with. Um, when I'm looking for a movie to, to watch, um, sometimes I'll look for one from a different country with subtitles. In other words, this is a way you can start to learn about um, other people in the world, uh, marginalized people, people who are not seen and not represented very much. And so simply just looking for um, the people and places and issues that you're not familiar with uh, is take, you can take a great step toward um, um, social justice that way. Um, and I think just the, the questions and just to reiterate some of these that, that you should ask as you are consuming media, whether it's news or entertainment um, is, are simply, um, how is this piece of media representing social inequality or is it representing social inequality at all? Um, how is this piece of media representing people who aren't, uh, to be frank, heterosexual, cisgendered, white American men? Um, is this piece of media representing um, people who aren't heterosexual, cisgendered, white American men? Um, and if it's not, then you should probably start looking elsewhere um, for other sources. Um, and something else that I think takes a little more interrogation, takes a little more research is who owns the media outlet that you're consuming? 
Um, is it a big multinational corporation who are making billions of dollars of profits from your consumption? Or is it a grassroots uh, news organization that is really interested in producing quality news um, at a low price or at a low cost? And it, I don't want to suggest necessarily that the more expensive corporate news are necessarily worse than the grassroots, small, low budget news. Um, there are plenty of um, counterexamples to that. Um, but it's something you should consider. Um, who's making money off of this news story that you're watching? Who's making money off of this movie? Uh, that you're seeing. Um, finally, I, I think one thing to, to consider is um, to produce your own media. Um, you all have access, hopefully, uh, in your high schools uh, to, to media. And if you have a smartphone, you have a movie studio right in your pocket. Um, you have uh, a pen and a paper and, and a mind that you can use to report news. And um, this can take a number of different forms. You can make your own podcast, you can write your own blog, you can contribute to your student newspaper, you can pitch stories to the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Um, but as you're doing this, as you're producing your own media, um, keep these same questions in mind. Um, represent yourself and your own position. Um, be honest about where you are in society. Uh, and don't try to represent others uh, without their authority or at least their voice in the matter. In other words, um, if like me, you're a white cisgendered heterosexual American man, uh, don't try to write a news story about um, African American women um, if they are not um, significantly contributing to that, that news story. In other words, don't try to speak for other people, let other people speak for themselves. Um, and, and in that light, highlight the voices of those who are oppressed, who are marginalized. Don't focus just on people in power. Um, if you're doing a, a news story about, um, I don't know, something, um, maybe a law that was passed uh, that impacts homeless people. Uh, I'm thinking of my own college days. I wrote a master's the or an undergraduate thesis about a law in Philadelphia that was aimed at getting homeless people out of center city, Philadelphia. Um, don't just interview the politicians who pass that law. Um, talk to homeless people um, whom, who are affected by that law. Um, and in general, whether you're producing media or consuming media, always question, always question. Um, read it, um, listen to it, watch it um, critically. Always question what you're seeing and, and don't take it as at face value. Don't take it as this is the truth because it's on the internet, or this is the truth because it's printed on the page, um, or this is the truth because it's on TV. Um, consume it critically and always take a number of different sources. Don't just use one uh, source for your news. Uh, take your news from a number of different sources. So I think that's all for now. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, looking forward to hopefully meeting you someday. You'll have to stop by Point Park or come to Point Park as a student uh, when you're ready and uh, we can chat about this further. So thanks very much for your attention. Uh, I'll talk to you soon.